This is the uh, the best uh, IKEA system. I'm actually uh, put, putting together a it's a it's a big modular setup entertainment center. But I mean, a lot of people might want to know how this works. Um, basically, when you're putting together the IKEA furniture, you need to set it up really close to where it's going to go. This stuff's extremely delicate, especially when it's part way through the assembly phase. Uh, becomes uh, it, it weakens even when it moves just a little bit. In fact, we had to move the old entertainment center just a little bit, and I, I could feel it starting to wobble. Um, when everything is attached together, and then there is a point where it has to get attached to the wall too, it's uh, it's going to be relatively strong. I mean, it, and it's stylish. It's complete. A lot of interior designers really like this stuff. Um, power tools on putting this stuff together really minimal I uh, I'll use the the little the power screwdriver thing here and the only reason I'm using the Ryobi 18 volt is because I lost the uh, the battery charger for my Hitachi 10.8 basically left it at somebody's house and then uh, they uh, stopped answering the phone as far as being able to recover actually it was a business place but I, I think maybe the guy ended up moving before I was able to get it back um, one of the dangers I, I run into is leaving tools behind, so uh, no reason to bring DeWalt out here. DeWalt's going to be too powerful for this stuff. It'll break it unless maybe it's the newer 12-volt stuff. But little screw gun, and then the best of system doesn't use the Allen head stuff, but a lot of other IKEA stuff does. It's usually going to be a 4 millimeter. Um, but on this, just to show how these little little pegs go it's a little turning peg and basically tops and bottoms on this part of it's kind of a slot fitment and uh, but basically these get started by hand um, it's really tricky to do the whole thing all the way down with a with a hand screwdriver but you can uh, we, we hit it there and then and we don't hit it hard, okay, using the impact, don't hit it very hard. And basically that'll go into these little peg holes here. And then we stick one of these little turnbuckle deals in. And these things, the way they're made is they'll tighten it up as you turn it. And then, of course, that gets turned with a hand tool. Um, it'll, it'll stick through when I push it through. The other thing, obviously, to look out for on all of this is the sequence of assembly. If there's any problem with these sequence of assembly, then uh, what we have to do is take something back apart. So here, and then when something hinges open, you know, it's kind of uh, your decision on which side will be in or out. Fortunately, they finish both sides, so these things slide down, slide down in here, and then... Uh, uh, it just kind of slides down, meets in a slot, and then uh, I'll show the next stage of this because it's basically one one module of, of this whole cabinet system. So with the four little studs attached here, uh, you can see that this just gets set up here. Uh, we kind of line everything up here, line it up on the slots. Line this up. No force gets used because this stuff is extremely delicate. But we it will take a little nudging to get some of the stuff into the little notches. Okay, but a little smack. Uh, sometimes I'll bring an assembly hammer on these jobs. This is just a rubber mallet, but I really like to avoid using it. Um, and the best of stuff usually doesn't require it. But that's one module, and basically the larger modules. They all go go together the same way. It's just there's more pegs and more more the little turning things involved with that. Next stage, I'll show how these start getting screwed together to each other to make the wall unit. One of the things you'll notice when you have a lot of IKEA stuff here is there's there's hardware left over in the packages. So where these things could act as standalone pieces of furniture, any one of them could. Um, on this build plan that I have for this, uh, uh, I'm gonna cover up the client's name for their protection, but on this build plan, it shows the shape of what we're dealing with. And on these, to make everything more secure, we, we work to attach it together. 
The only thing I'm going to run into that leaves a little bit of a question is how the legs and feet on this are going to work. Um, i got to go check the hardware boxes again and see if I've got the extended feet because what usually comes with these are the little ones. But there are um, little extensions that, that can go on here too. It's just basically a screw-in system. And then in these little hardware boxes or baggies, um, there's going to be some longer screws. And generally, I like to put them in the, the, the middle sections because that's not where the little shelf holders go. I just hate having to move a screw to put a shelf holder in. And uh, that's, that's kind of how that goes. Stuff really has to be attached. But don't be surprised if every once in a while to get something secure, especially if it's going to be holding some weight, that you'll want to have some extra screws handy to uh, shoot just a little pilot hole through like maybe a middle section over here and then put some you know bigger screws in like regular drywall screws or something. So there's a few different accessory foot options for these. This is one of them. It's, it's basically a little metal leg. Um, we it's got a little bit of movement to it because it's basically it's held into the same screw holes as the stock ones. Um, and the reason the reason it's kind of a broad screw thing is you can adjust for height. A lot of times on floors they're not level, especially if it's a concrete pad that was uh, carpeted. And uh, so what we've got here is we would uh, kind of square this up a little bit. Now, if you look, the inner square isn't 100% square with the outer square on these things. So, um, you know, we're, we just kind of fudge factor it so it looks tidy. Give it a good crank here because this, this part here gets tightened. Um, there's no height, there's no height adjustment on these things. Uh, the, the stock ones, it's, it's height adjustment, the accessory one not. And then there's a little threaded thing here. And, and the main reason for that was to be able to reach that with the Allen wrench and then be able to tighten that in. Um, I gotta set, I'll we'll start that and then hit it with a screw gun. There we go. You notice on a screw gun, I'm using that new style Ryobi battery, and it's lasted for several jobs. I'm not even carrying the. Uh... So here we're hopefully on a home stretch. Um, first rows of drawers in the the Inrita drawer system, really the worst one they make. Uh, get, getting a little screws into those things is one of the biggest troubles here. Um, one of the things to deal with with IKEA wall unit stuff especially when you have an uneven floor and you know trim at the bottom of the walls which is entirely normal is they'll come with little bracket stuff for attaching to the wall up here or maybe rail but the thing is in order for everything to be level um, and to be able to get power cords for all your components in and out you, you really need more space so you can see here I stacked a couple of two by threes uh, using long screws into the studs and then the screws as I work outward they don't necessarily need to go into the studs they just need to go to that one single board that went to the stud and this is really the utility area so none of that gets painted the trim or anything like that so um, but but you gotta play these angles a little bit because the um, you know a lot of times you deal with a concrete slab floor that's uneven so What's happening here is a lot of screws, preferably, it's kind of hard to tell in the dark here, preferably as close to a corner as possible so that it's, it's got where all the little dovetails were grabbing on the stuff. Don't want to get too aggressive about tightening them down, but they, they need to be firm in order for this thing to get rigid and be solid on that wall. Uh, the other thing is the stock screws for attaching the different units together to make this a solid wall piece, they're not good enough. We got to use real, real screws in a hardware store to get that. Um, they got to be heavy duty enough to hold this stuff together when you start moving it. Otherwise, it, it's just going to start coming apart on you. And uh, and so yeah, you're going to be buying some other screws. And then there's other IKEA hardware that's going to be left over, like these are the little feet bottom things for the rest of these. Once I I got it figured out which ones are going to be the top, which ones are going to be the bottom on this particular design, which the customer designed. Um, they could just as well have had the big cabinets on the bottom and the little ones on top, but because of the seating arrangement here, it made more sense for them to build it this way.
And uh, so on for more progress with this project. So here we have the Besta Entertainment Center put in and the uh, with the indirect lighting on the inside, all the components put in back, all put together. A couple of days work to get this all in. Uh, it's kind of delicate. But you can see here the spacing with the wall. Um, Kind of hard to tell on the camera from this angle, but uh, you got to have putting these things in because of the baseboard trim here. You, we got to space them out from the wall. The other thing is we had to make room for all the electrical stuff and still have it relatively hidden. Um, so let's see if we can get the camera back here. Um, maybe you can tell. I guess it's kind of hard to tell with with that, but you got to have a. It's it's actually about three and a half inches space or basically two two by threes where um, the internal screws up here are holding this thing to the wall and it's not just to protect from children mountain climbing on this thing but a lot of times in a basement installation the the main floor isn't quite level and they, they have little leveling things little adjusters on some of the legs that come with these things but that doesn't necessarily deal with the weight shift you'll have when you have it full of stuff and stuff is trying to trying to move around on you. The other thing is when it gets pretty heavy, we uh, we don't want to have any fears over how it's been loaded. So screws going in uh, with the boards going into the walls, pretty much the way you got to do it. And not nails. It's got to be screws. Okay, nails aren't gonna aren't gonna work well. Uh, nails can still pull out or weaken over time, especially if it's in a place that's maybe not temperature controlled all the time. Although in a regular house, that's probably not much of an issue. Even what I talked about on the cabins and stuff, um, you definitely got to look into that. Although, there's some other reasons I won't get into where on the uh, cabins, we probably want to avoid a lot of the IKEA furniture, even though in a regular house, it's pretty good. So, there it is. The... Uh, the big two-day project of the Besta Entertainment Center. Uh, I'm not sure if the picture even does it justice, but it really does add a lot considering this is a basement. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it a nice hangout room and yeah. little lighted things in the corners, kind of a nice touch. And this is all one of those done to design it yourself off yeah. the website. Yeah. Well, we looked at a whole bunch. I mean, wasn't super thrilled about IKEA, but it's hard to find. You know what we really wanted. Oh yeah, this you'd be you'd be into it a yeah, few thousand. Either a ton of glass or open, you know, where you can fill. It's, I don't want to see all of our games and crap. Uh huh. Yeah, to, to make that out of real wood, I mean, it'd be a few thousand. I mean, yeah. there's just no way around it. Yeah. Even with IKEA, you know, you're into it several hundred. But the uh, the thing is, it's you know, as long as it, as long as the place stays temperature controlled, because that's the other thing is. Um, if it's like in a garage or like I do a lot of remote cabin type work yeah. and that's where somebody's not there right. for six months so at a time. Yeah, and that, that, screws, that screws up anything with park floor. But if it's in a regular house, it does great. Yeah. But, uh, where, yeah. What cab, where do you do cabin work? 